Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. I know you can see this big box right here next to me. You know what it is if you've been with me for a while. I've had this printer for right at about two months, and it's time for it to come out of the box. But before I get into doing that, you know what I want you to do. The three things. Hit the like, the subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. Now, we are going to get into unboxing this Epson Workforce 7820. I purchased this with the intent of being able to use it for sublimation. I am going to convert it, not in this tutorial, but in the next tutorial, I will be going through the process of converting this printer to use for sublimation. But tonight, the goal of this tutorial or this video is just to take it out of the box and give you some of the specifications and show you how big it is and some of the features that it has. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so you saw the struggle <laughs> to get it out of the box. Um, I had to call in reinforcements. It does come with a user's manual. Um, it has the power cord and four cartridges. There's one for yellow, blue, uh, black, and magenta. So pretty much the same thing that you get when you, um, you know, if you weren't converting it. Now, I think I have it facing me. The front of it is facing me, so I'm gonna turn it around. So you can see it. Sorry about the noise. All right, so it is taped down pretty much everywhere. I'll go ahead and remove these blue pieces of tape. Okay, we moved the printer to a bigger table so that you can get a view of the whole thing. It is a much bigger printer than my Epson 2760. And I'm going to continue removing the tape because I haven't finished. I've only removed four pieces of the tape that is on this printer. Um, I'll finish removing the tape and then I will come back on the video and talk you through some of the trays and features that um, are here on the printer. So before I get into the specs or the specifications about all the trays and, and all of the, um, the size of this big, huge printer, let me first say that just looking at it from the outside, I can see that there is um, the connections for the, you know, just your core, your power cord. There's an ethernet connection. There's a USB connection. There's, um, looks like two ethernet um, ports, one for your, like just your regular printer cable. And I think, um, just looking at it here on the side, there is a USB connection here. And I do know that the front of this, when it's connected, is touchscreen. Um, this is capable of doing double-sided printing, which of course I won't do. And it's also capable of being a scanner and a fax machine. In addition to that, According to the specs, this printer weighs about 40 pounds. I think during the video I said it was 25 pounds, but it's 40 pounds. So like right at about, it's actually 39.8, which is the same thing as 40 pounds, okay? So just take that into consideration. Um, when looking at the dimensions, then when I looked at the dimensions of the printer, it said, and give me one second because I want you to know that. So the dimensions is approximately 20 inches wide. I think I said it was 19 and the depth of it is 17.7 inches. So it's a pretty big printer. And if you are going to get a printer like this, I would definitely say make sure you have adequate space for it and that you have a table that will hold it. This is not the table that I'm going to use for this printer. I have a, a designated table that I'm going to use for it that is more sturdy than this. This is just a card table that I have it on right now and I don't think it's sturdy enough. Okay, so let's get into looking at the trays and the 
paper handling um, and the, all of the other specs within this, this Epson Workforce 7820. When I looked at this user's manual, to me, it wasn't very um, comprehensive. It didn't have a lot of information in it. None of the parts are actually labeled in this manual. So what I did was I went on Google and I just Googled the um, Epson 7820 Workforce printer and I was able to print out the product labels that'll help me help you, okay? So when I look at it, um, number one, and it's weird the way they have this labeled, um, the back of the printer right here, uh, all of this comes up and out, okay? So number one, this is called the automatic document feeder okay so once i put my paper in i know my paper is going to go in back here all right there's an edge guide on here so that just helps keep your paper lined up there is an input tray which is number three okay and it's the strange thing about this printer you guys for me is that these this looks like a document feeder, but then there's also this part of the printer that looks like a document feeder too. And because I think what they tried to do is combine the two users manuals for the 7820 and the 7840, they kind of just jumbled it up and it's not labeled very well. That's just my opinion. Okay, so number four is the document support. I'm not sure if it's this one or this one. Um, and there's an output tray. Um, then, you know, if you're looking at the printer from here, there's a paper support. So there are um, like edge guides back here. I'm not sure if you can see those, but there are also edge guides up here. And I'm not sure if this part of the tray is for when you're getting ready to scan and maybe this, this tray is for when you're going to use uh, the sublimation paper. Um, and then there are also paper trays here. There's a paper tray here. And then there's also another paper tray that is down here. This comes out, this is number seven and it's called a paper cassette cover, okay? So um, I'm sure you can put paper in here. There are also edge guides in here. So it looks like it has two trays. Um, that it also has a document feeder in the back and it has a document feeder on the top. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, if I close all of this back up, it'll fit and close in very nicely back here. There is a component that comes out. This, you know, this is typical of when you get a paper jam, you might have to remove this part. Um, it just this fits in together with these two clamps. Put that back. Okay. Um, there is a scanner function, which I definitely won't be using. The primary purpose of this printer is to be able to be to print 13 by 19 sublimation designs, images. Um, I'm not going to turn it on because when I get ready to turn this on. I will already have my sublimation ink in here. Um, but there's a power button and it does have an LCD display. Um, it's capable of doing fax, it's capable of um, wireless printing, so I don't have to have it directly connected to anything. Um, and we will get into all of the other features once I get the printer turned on, but I'm not going to turn it on today. I kind of just wanted you to see the size of it see the width of it, see some of the paper trays, and um, kind of get to know the printer the way I'm going to get to know the printer. Okay, so hopefully this is helpful to you. In the next tutorial, when you see me with this printer again, I will be converting it. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already done the three things, the like, the subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications. Don't forget to do that because I upload new content every single week without fail. I am on the road to 5,000 subscribers and I want you to join me on this journey. All right, thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching.